Knit and Knin, part eight. We're going to finish the book today, fourth graders. And if I wanted to show you an illustration from the last chapter that I didn't show you yesterday in yesterday's video, part seven. And it is an illustration of Knit and Knin on the uh, mantle with all the different pictures. And if you remember, that is where Min discovers that Gertie is Richard's mom. So lots of things that are going to be solved by the end of the book. Chapter 24 is titled, The Ghost. And there they are. In the middle of the night, there was a loud crashing sound in the parlor. Several of the photographs fell off the mantle, and then it sounded as if a vase was tipped over. It was the ghost, and it sounded angry. Oh no, whispered Knit to Min. What do we do? There was one last flicker of light from an ember in the fireplace, casting a glow all throughout the parlor. It wasn't bright, but it was just enough so that Mitt and Min could see whether they wanted to or not. We must wake Richard, said Mitt. The pair crept out into the living room, hoping to run up the stairs to Richard's room. Crash! The dictionary on the library table fell on the floor, causing all sorts of other books near it to fall off the table. Mitt and Min were in the middle of the room when, all of a the sudden, they were face to face with the ghost. The pair shrieked! The ghost shrieked! All they saw of each other in the dimly lit room were subtle outlines of shadows against the walls. They all continued shrieking, until their eyes adjusted. It wasn't a ghost. It was another white-footed mouse. No, it was a pair of white-footed mice. And here is the illustration that goes with that scene. I love how the illustrator made it behind like the shadows behind look big and creepy. <laughs> it wasn't a ghost. It was another white-footed mouse. No, it was a pair of white-footed mice. And in an instant, Mitt and Min knew exactly who they were. Who are they, fourth graders? There, in the middle of the room, with only a bit of firelight to grace them, Mitt and Min recognized their parents. Each of them knew, in the ways that mice know, that they were family, and from now on they would always be together. As they nuzzled, Mitt and Min's mother told them how, when they had arrived in Chicago, they went to the bus stop and hid in a traveler's suitcase. They came to the bed and breakfast with the traveler, hoping to stay out of sight while they thought of a way to get back to Michigan. When they first came to Richard's, it was a busy place with lots of visitors, staying and having a good time. And then their mother went on. From the first night we arrived, I wanted to help keep the house tidy. So I pitched in here and there, cleaning up when I could and helping people find things whenever they misplaced them. But soon people stopped coming. And then lowering her voice to a near hush so Richard wouldn't wake, she added, And I have no idea why. Mitt and Min didn't know whether to laugh or cry. They had found their parents. There wasn't a ghost, but quickly breaking their reunion, Mitt's father spoke up. 
We must all get back to Michigan. We can't wait any longer. The boat's leaving. Their father took them over to a newspaper sitting on an end table. They recognized a word in some letters, much in the way mice recognize such details. They noted the letters that spelled Mackinac and saw a picture of a ship with Christmas trees on it. There was a date of December 2nd on the newspaper, and it matched the date of the calendar nearby. All mice knew of this ship. Mitt was sure he had sailed on it before. After unloading the trees in Chicago for Christmas, the ship would return to Sheboygan. It was their only ride back. It was their only way home. They had to leave now or they wouldn't make it. Chapter 25 Goodbye, and there's the illustration. That's an address book. You guys probably have not recognized that because most people don't use them, but this is what people used to write like addresses and phone numbers in. Now we keep everything on our smartphones, but that's what people used to put like an address or a phone number in. So that's an address book. But wait, cried Min. While preparing to leave, Min told her parents about Gertie and how Gertie had taken care of her for a very long time. At this, Min's mother took on a soft look in her eyes, a feeling of instant love and thankfulness for the woman who had taken care of her baby mouse. Min told how she discovered that Richard must be Gertie's son and how she couldn't leave without letting Richard know that his mother was very lonesome for him. Min's parents listened to her story, and then Min's mother, wise in the ways of a mother's heart, had an idea. In the stack of books that had fallen on the floor was a book of phone numbers and, address and addresses. Together, the mice lifted the pages until the letter M. And there it was. It said, Mom, 555-432-7093. They left the book open where Richard would be sure to find it. Trust me, said Min's mother. When he sees the book, he will know what to do. The mice were making a bit of noise as they were scuttling to get out of the house, and it woke Richard. He came down the stairs and saw the mess. Curious, he began to look around. Although Mitt and Min wanted to say goodbye to Richard right then, the four mice knew they had no time to do so. They must leave through the front door at that very moment, or they would never make it to the ship Mackinac in time. But in the quiet of night, as they were all slipping through the crack in the front door, Min took one last look behind her. In the faint glow of the last ember, she saw Richard's shadow against the wall. He was holding the address book in one hand and the telephone in the other. Min knew it was all right to leave. Chapter 26 Mackinac. The foursome exchanged stories and tales on their way down to the waterfront. They moved very fast and made certain not to lose sight of each other. They all were trembling with excitement, but yet disbelief that after all they had been through, they were finally together. When they reached the waterfront, the boat was there and the trees had already been unloaded, except for a few that would remain for the ride back to Michigan. The four skittered across the icy dock and each had to leap onto the boat's edge. First Mitt, then his mother and father, and then next came Min. One, two, three, splash! Min didn't make it. Three were on the boat, 
but Min was struggling in the water below, and the boat was starting to pull away. Mitt wasn't about to lose his sister again. He remembered what Abe Lincoln had said. A house divided will not stand. All at once, Mitt jumped into the icy water to save Min. At the same time, the anchor was being lifted. Mitt saw it right away, and he directed Min to hang on. There, in the middle of the nearly frozen water, Mitt and Min held on to the anchor as it was pulled upward toward the boat. And, for the first time in a long time, there was something else there to warm them when they needed it, their parents. And then this is an illustration that is in your booklet, fourth graders. The four huddled in a life vest near the, near the boiler room of the boat, gathering whatever heat they could. Once they regained their footings, their father spoke up. It's been a long journey for all of us. I'm so happy that we are together again the way it should be for a family of white-footed mice. Now, the minute we reach shore, we have one more thing to do. Mitt and Min were listening. What? asked Mitt. Mitt's parents spoke at the same time. We have to find the others. And that's how it came to be that a family of four white-footed mice came riding home to Michigan one winter afternoon. They arrived in Sheboygan on a boat right back where they had started. Now that they had found each other again, new adventures were waiting. And as Mitt and Min had le learned on that icy cold night in Lake Michigan, they had more brothers and sisters than they ever knew. Each one scattered to a different place because of a mishap that happened a long time ago. And Mitch and Min would find them someday too, because although Mitch never did find his mitten, and Min never was able to return to Eli, they had found something more important along the way, and that was, to a willing heart, nothing is impossible. The End happy ending, of course, but also a twist, right, fourth graders, at the end of this book, and that is that last um, page of your reading packet. Uh, it's where you're to continue on. It's called a sequel, right? It's like you're continuing the story. So think about what could be this next adventure for Mitt and Min. Is it to go find their brothers and sisters? Is it to continue living in Michigan, maybe they go see Gertie. Who knows? It's your imagination. But have fun with writing a brief sequel to Mitt and Min's Illinois Adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.